everyone, it's Amanda. Today I'm going to be doing a reading blog for the Devil's Night series by Penelope Douglas on Devil's Night. Yes, ma'am. So I'm reading the whole series and I'm just going to tell you what I think and how I like the characters, you know, just like your average. I'm not going to be spoiling anything. The only thing that may will be spoiled is like the characters in general and maybe like a part or two that I enjoyed that has no context really so it doesn't spoil anything either. I hope you guys enjoy this type of video and if you've read this series or any of the books comment down below I'd love to talk to you because I literally just finished these this week and they're fresh in my brain and these characters are very much part of my soul now so I would love to talk to you about your favorite characters comments below but let's get into it and see which one was my favorite i am 50 percent of the way through with corrupt by penelope douglas let me tell you a little bit about what it's about so we have the devil's night series it follows four men and they are all kind of dark and mysterious and they are part of a group called the four horsemen who wreak havoc on the town on devil's night so every year they do some shady shit on devil's night and they are known to do this every year so that's the premise of the whole series, but this particular book is following Michael, who is the alpha male of the group, and yeah, I don't know if I like him really that much, but we'll get into that. So he is the main character, and his love interest is going to be Rika, who is his brother's girlfriend or best friend. So it's kind of taboo sounding, but it's really not because they were already broken up because it was kind of a conveniency relationship. Their parents wanted them to be together and she doesn't even like him. I mean, he likes her, but she's not, she's like attracted to Michael. So she doesn't even want his brother. Kind of weird. That's the premise in terms of the relationship. Now the plot line is a whole mess. So the plot line goes, she actually sneaks into their car on Devil's Night when she's 16. And this is all in the past. So we're getting stories from three years earlier and then three years later. We are finding out that she snuck into Devil's Night, their little party. And she actually ruined everything. And now they're in prison. And Michael is the only one who didn't go to prison. So now we're three years after this all happened. And she is moving away for college and she wants to be free and alone and just forget about those old memories. We don't really know what's going on with the past. It's kind of told to us in dual timelines. So now she is just going away for college alone and she ends up running into the four horsemen who are now out of prison and they want revenge for going to prison. You know what I'm saying? And they think that she's the one who ruined everything and made them go to prison. That's T. I'm not sure if she actually did something yet. It's only 50% of the way through and we still don't really know the whole story. We kind of are getting glimpses, but not as much. I think we're gonna have to wait until the end to really find out what happened that night, but I'm really intrigued by that plot. So that's what's kind of keeping me going is finding out the mystery behind it all. And it's kind of like a little bit thrillery. I'm really liking that aspect. But the aspect of the relationship between Michael and Rika, I'm not a huge fan of. And I think it might be because I might not like alpha males, but I'm not sure. Because it's hard to say. I am i don't know what's throwing me off about it. I also don't really like Rika. She's saying she likes the dangerous game and she's all about danger. But then she'll be crying like the next minute. And I'm like, okay, girl. Rika, whenever she's like emotional, I'm just like not feeling sorry for her i'm also just not really into her character i'm like girl go find someone else like she's pining after this guy that doesn't pay any attention to her and i'm just like oh my god like when are you gonna just move on with your life but that's just me michael is not the type of guy i would go for he is so mean i don't know what i don't like about michael i guess we'll figure it out with the other three books um i'm planning to read them all for this video so we'll see what we think right now i'm really liking kai um he is so nice and sweet and then i'm really liking damon too which is surprising because i heard he's like the worst right so i don't know he's kind of like really bad boy but he has i i just can see so much depth to him and he hasn't done anything really that bad yet at the 50 percent mark so i'm not like apt to hate him quite yet or anything so 
I'm gonna keep reading and I will update you when I'm finished. <laughs> hey y'all. <laughs> so I just finished Corrupt by Penelope Douglas and I am rating it three stars. So let me get into why. I still didn't connect with the characters that much. Um, Michael and Rika just aren't my favorite out of all the romances that I've read. So I wasn't like super into their romantic scenes or anything. I mean, the steam room though. I mean, yeah, that's what I have to say. I was super into that, but other than that, <laughs> That's because Ka- okay, we're not gonna get into spoilers, but honestly, that was a whole mood. But other than that, it was pretty just lackluster for me. And then the plot, the plot line is like super kind of like thrillery, kind of like Halloween-y, which I'm really happy I'm reading this right now. Yet the ending was so far-fetched for me. I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck? I was reading it and I was like, no way, no way that's gonna happen. There's no fucking way but it, it did it happened and i was here for it though i mean it was like a soap opera type moment but i was here for it i'm just like wow that was so unrealistic i mean i can't believe anyone would ever do that in real life but it was still really good and i did enjoy it so three stars because yeah it was good like it was fun i would recommend it to people that really like uh alpha males I think a lot of people like this one because Michael is an alpha, so I think maybe people really would enjoy it. But I'm excited to start Hideaway, which is Kai's story. I'm gonna start that today. I'm gonna get reading. Alright, update. I am 50% of the way through with Hideaway, which is the second book, and it follows Kai and Banks. So Banks is the main girl. We kind of find out more about her in later chapters but at first we just know that she's just this random girl she dresses in tomboy kind of clothes she dresses in like huge baggy clothes and no girly clothes whatsoever and he meets her through this confessional so he is going to church to confess and he goes to confession and he just goes there to like talk to himself kind of but he ends up actually talking to her and he didn't really want to talk to anyone, but she ended up being in there while he was talking. So that's their first meetup, and it's super cute. But I'll be honest, 25% of the way through with this one, I was not feeling it. It was really slow to start, and I was thinking this one might be another three star. And I was getting a little disappointed because I heard this book so hyped, like this series so hyped. But once it got to like 35% or 40%, that was when it started getting really good and you're starting the backstories behind Banks and also Kai. I mean, we know Kai, he's the nice one, he's the noble one, and he's the one that wants to do the right thing always, but we get to learn more about him and it's literally so good. So I have a few passages that I like to, you know, talk about with you. I'm 50% of the way through, so now we've gotten to a little bit of the steamy scenes, which let me tell you, one of the best scenes is when he is pretending to be like a preacher and she's confessing and he's just like kind of there in like the bell tower i can't i can't that was really good and i really love their chemistry the tension was there so that's when i started getting really connected because i saw that they had like super hot tension so now i'm into it you know what i'm saying and then but one part i really liked and i think i cried a little bit oh my god yes no yeah this part made me cry it was the part when so at one point we're learning more about kai and his backstory and kind of his dad and why he wants to be such a good person because his dad was a great person in his life and he was a great role model and kai just wants to live up to his expectations at one point he takes banks to his house to like eat some dinner because she doesn't really have a lot at home and he has steak and she's like i've never had steak before or whatever that's not the point the point is this story oh my god i was so sad so basically he tells a story about how his mom and dad were struggling at first because his dad didn't have like a super good job and at this point they're rich obviously but in the past they weren't kai is saying I remember one night I was like five, my dad came home and I'd already eaten mac and cheese, of course. I was sitting watching TV and she, his mom, 
put a steak in front of him at the kitchen table and I still remember it sizzling on the plate the way it smelled and he was so mad. I remember him looking up at her from his chair, this mix of anger and confusion my father had been used to doing without. He grew up poor, but my mother hadn't. She had come from a wealthy family and left a rich fiance forced on her in order to marry him. my father. She was disowned. My grandparents had never met me. How could you waste the money? If my family doesn't eat steak, then I don't eat steak. But my mother said that important men eat steak and she didn't want my father to forget that he was an important man. I raised my eyes, forcing a smile. Instead, he became a great man and now we can have steak anytime we want. I dropped my gaze, mumbling under my breath as I absently nudged the plate away. I don't even need to be important. I wasn't important. <laughs> I don't know why, it just really hit me. I think a lot of us can relate to dads who work very hard for the family and I just thought it was so such a good story in terms of Kai and how he looks up to his dad. It was just was, it was just so good and it might not seem emotional when I was reading it but if you read like if you have the backstory and everything, I feel like it just hits you harder. So right now 50% of the way through we're at the part where Banks is talking about Rika and how much she doesn't like her. <laughs> And I'm just like, yes, I don't like that girl either. I don't like her. I don't know what is throwing me off about her. It's like, she's the type of girl that I wouldn't be interested in being friends with in real life. So I think I have this like innate thing that I'm like, I don't know, I don't like her, but I really like Banks. Banks is my type of person. Like we would be besties, I already know. And now she's gonna go fight Rika because she's a little bit jealous because of the whole thing that happened in the first book. I won't spoil anything not spoiling but there's some stuff that happened and she's super jealous and it's really good because she's gonna fight her so yeah i'm gonna keep reading and i will let you know when i'm done <laughs> okay i take it back i take it back i kind of like rika now i kind of like rika now if you know you know but that scene I can stand. I can stand now. But still, I'm not all the way there. I'm not all the way for Rika, but I can at least tolerate her now at this point. I can stop being so annoyed when she's on the page, is what I'm saying. <laughs> So I'm uh, almost done, but I just learned more about Damon and his backstory is so tragic i am scared for his book because of all of the content that's going to be in there and it's just really awful to read about and thinking about this happening in real life is just really sickening but yeah there were definitely times when i was tearing up when i'm i was hearing about how he was coping with the trauma and how he kind of navigated the pain in his head um oh uh, yeah so i'm excited to read kill switch but i'm finishing up this one in terms of plot this one is a little bit better than corrupt but it's still kind of far-fetched in the way in like all the conflicts it's kind of just convenient to me that they set it up this way. I'm not sure. Like, some of the things were, they're like, oh my god, we didn't see that coming. It's like, what is a Scooby-Doo? Of course we saw that coming, you know? <laughs> so I'm not sure. I mean, the plot is just like, it's fun. It's fun, but it's nothing where, like, the thriller aspect or, like, the, the kind of tension that you have toward the plot line and not the romance is just kind of like oh my god 90s mystery <laughs> but that's okay it's just for fun and it's really fun to read this before devil's night so i'm gonna finish it and we'll see what we think all right y'all so i just finished hideaway and i'm gonna give it four stars so i definitely liked it better than corrupt but i still had issues because it was really focused on Damon and not, I mean, 
it's hard. In terms of like the plot, I really like the first half way better in terms of the romance. The romance was so good and I really liked the tension and learning more. So the first half would probably be like five stars once you get past that point where it's kind of boring. I was feeling it. But then once it got into the nitty gritty and like the buying out the hotel and the way that the contract was with the whole conflict, that I was like, it was fine. It was fine. It was a fine plot, but it wasn't anything special. Basically, it's not a spoiler. The whole thing is about this contract that he makes with Damon's dad so that he can um, try to find Damon. He wants to find Damon because of this whole thing. We won't spoil anything. But they, he's missing. He kind of ran away after the first book. So he wants to buy out this hotel that Damon's dad owns. And in order to do so, Damon's dad is making him marry this random girl. And because of that, Kai is like, well, then I have access to Banks for the next whatever amount of time because Banks works for him as like a service person. So he wanted to obviously have her around. So he ends up trying to get this contract. It's just a weird, it's fun. Like I said, it's just a fun little plot. It's nothing special. There could have been a better way to go about it, I think. Because in the end, the whole contract thing ended up playing out so weird. With the girl that comes for the arranged marriage, it was just such a weird aspect of the book. It didn't even, it didn't even like really have anything to do with anything. So... I don't know, but four stars because I did really like the romance and Banks was one of my favorite characters. I definitely really loved her and I definitely liked looking more into Damon's story, even though I wanted more Kai. I mean, if Damon has his whole book next, I didn't see why Kai wasn't like the main person, just like Michael was in Corrupt. I felt like they were giving a lot of attention to Damon when it was Kai's book, but I'm going to get started on Kill Switch and we will see if we like Damon or if we do not stand. <laughs> so I'm 50% of the way through with Kill Switch. Don't mind this angle. So far, I'm loving it so much. Winter is my favorite by far. We already know. And Damon is just the best also. I mean, anyone named Damon I feel like is the best. Like Vampire Diaries Damon, this Damon. I mean, just the perfect bad villain, but also not a villain, you know? So basically we're following them and Winter is this girl that he ended up pranking or she's what kind of went wrong in the first book. So I'm not going to spoil it, but they're connected in a major way. And now Damon is back in her life and it's super cute, but it's a hate to love super hate. My favorite scene is probably the car scene. So she's blind and she can't drive and she always says like she wants to drive. That's like the one thing she wants to do is drive. So he takes her and makes her drive. Except like he holds the gas and the brake and everything. That scene's so good but there's a bunch of other scenes that are great like the fountain scene and the haunted house scene so good <laughs> so yeah i have nothing else to say other than i really like this book and it's my favorite so far for sure i can see why people really like this one i think it has more of a story going on like the plot of it is still moving forward the way that the others did with all the politics and the families and the interwoven connections but it just makes more sense in this one and their motivations make more sense too because Winter and Damon's relationship is really complicated. So I'm really enjoying it and I'm just rooting for them. So I'll update you when I'm finished. That's really sad. Sad. <sighs> if you want to know where I am in the book, I'm at the part. Or Damon's explaining. <laughs> Damon's explaining his childhood. <laughs> it's really sad. Because he's talking about his dog. Oh, God. This is dead an awful person. 
Well, this is a turn of events. <sighs> Alright. I'm gonna go back into reading. Hopefully, it doesn't get any more sad because I don't think I can take it. Are you a little devil? Yes, you are so cute. Happy Devil's Night, Fortune. You know why you're the devil? Because you get hair in everywhere. It's true. Look at the bed sheets. All that hair is your fault, honey. <laughs> but I love you. But I love you. Oh, you're so cutie. I'm in the same sweatshirt because aesthetics, it's just too good. Like we just, okay, but I didn't show you the back yet, did I? Okay, look at the back. Look at all that dog hair. I have to wear it for devil's night, you know? So I finished Kill Switch last night after I was crying. I finished it <laughs> and I loved it. I really loved it. And it was my favorite so far for sure. Winter and Damon, it was just so good and well put together. Just, it was so centered around the romance that it was so good. It had like the most steamy scenes and that last steamy scene with a certain other person. <laughs> hello, hello, how you doing? Can I come? <laughs> I just started Nightfall. So it's Devil's Night, happy Devil's Night. But basically, yeah, Kill Switch was like so good. I don't even know how to talk about it cause I don't know how to talk about things that I enjoy. Damon's, oh my god, Damon's story. It was just, it just touched me in such a way that I just, I obviously cried because of him. And just seeing him develop over the course of the three books and learning to kind of like really like him, it was just really hard to hear his story. And I just get super invested in my characters as you can, <laughs> as you can tell. And then Winter was just such a good character. She just warmed my heart and the fact that she was blind but she was also just such a strong character and she didn't have that same... See, Rika was like my least favorite because I don't know, there was something about her that threw me off but the rest of the girls so far, I really love and I think they're so strong. I just love them. And I loved how Winter was just like, no, I don't want anything from you. And then like two minutes later, she's like, I want you to park that. You know what I'm saying? Five stars to that book. Five stars. Five great stars. And I'm about 25% into Nightfall. And I was not expecting to like it this much. Like, I feel like Will has been kind of on the back burner of all the stories. Like, we get a little bit of him, but we don't get that much. I mean, we know he has a sense of humor and he's kind of like nice, but he has his little, he has his little moments. But oh my god. Guys, I think this one might be my favorite. I'm not sure yet, but I remember Emery, which is his love interest, and he's just been obsessed with her since the first book, but oh my god. She's a swimmer, for one. Two, she doesn't take no shit, but also, like, she has a really hard life at home and things, so oh, it's just so good. I can relate to her so much, too, so I'm like, oh my god, which one's gonna be my favorite? Is it Kill Switch or is it Nightfall? Comment below your guess. Comment below your guess right now. What do you think I'm gonna like more? Will or Damon? I don't know. I don't know at this point. I really don't know because I was not expecting it to be this good. Basically, okay, I shouldn't go over that right now though. I should wait until the 50% mark, right? Yeah, I should. So I'm gonna get back to reading and I will update you in like an hour because I'm almost to 50%. Yay! So I'm 50% of the way through with Nightfall and oh my god, it's super steamy. I'm loving it so much. So let me tell you what it's about. We have Emery, which is like his Will's long lost love. Like that's who he was obsessed with in the first book. We already knew that in the first book. He's in love with her and she's kind of going through a lot. So she doesn't feel like she can really have his love or like accept it and she's super spunky i kind of like her and i'll be honest like when i found out it was a random girl we didn't really know much about except from the first book and not alex who he's been friends with the whole time and like i really love alex i was a little disappointed because i wanted alex and him to be like soulmates kind of thing 
because they are just like best friends and I really like that. But we got this random girl and I was like, okay, I don't know if I'll like this. But then I was really loving Emery in the beginning and I'm still really liking her. And now Alex, you know, is in the picture and oh my gosh, I'm just like, I don't know who I want. Like, do I want a love triangle? I don't know. Do I want Alex to really win his heart? I know she might be better for him. I'm not sure. I just really like Alex and she's always been there for him. So it's kind of hard to like Emery right now when she's kind of, she has that mean side to her. But obviously for valid reasons, it's just hard. So that's where we're at. Basically, the plot of this one is that Will is in this random jail, basically. But the jail is where wealthy kids go when they're like uncontrollable. It's called Blacks... Blackwater? Blacksmiths? Something black holds like five of these guys that have like killed people or are just bad in some type of way, causing fires, doing some shady shit. And Will's in there for some reason. We don't really know why. And Emery ends up there for some reason too. So they're in the same place at the same time. And this is all like in the present day. That's what's happening right now. They're like 26 or something. Just chilling in this like Lord of the Flies situation. So it's kind of interesting. There's like a guy in charge. And we don't really know much about him. But he's super dark and interesting. And then there's like four other guys. It's good. I'm liking it. I'm getting some vibes that like maybe they'll be like reverse harem in this book. I'm not sure. But there's already been some things. And I'm like, oh, already we had like so many steamy scenes. I'm like dying over here. I'm like, let me breathe, Penelope. Let me breathe. I'm loving hearing about the other guys as well. Like the four horsemen and their lives because through Will's story you obviously get to see like how Michael's doing and Damon and just how their lives are now that they're like 26. I love how we got to grow up with them and see their past and now they're like older it's so good but Will is still struggling and uh, I just want the best for him because he has been through so much and now he's not the sweet boy he used to be and I just want him to be back to his happy self and have his sense of humor back oh my baby i am digging it so i'm gonna get reading and i'll be back when i'm finished okay y'all so i just finished nightfall and oh my god i have to say that was a whole trip that had some intense moments and we got like a whole conclusion to almost every part of this series which I really liked. So this one was another five star for me. It was so good. I really liked how she incorporated all of the horsemen into this one. And well, she does that every time, but this one really like concluded all of their stories and you got to see all the loose ends tie up with each of their stories and see how they all come together and still are like besties. And I loved the way that this story ended and the way that the revenge was had. The steamy scenes were intense. There was one that I was like, oh my god, I would never. I would never. There was one, like most of the time I'm like, okay, okay. But then one of them, like, it was the one on the train, if anyone read this book. The one on the train, I was like, oh my god, that's literally... <laughs> and I liked reading it, though. So, I mean, there you have it. Definitely five stars to that one. Was it better than Kill Switch, though? I think Damon and Winter hold this really special place in my heart, but I really liked the locked up together aspect of this one with Will and Emery being like forced proximity trope. I really liked that. So it's so hard, but I think I'm going to have to say that Kill Switch was my favorite. Kill Switch really got me in all the emotions. It got me like, oh yeah. It got me really sad. I really liked the story between Winter and Damon and how they came together and they had that childhood story that was so beautiful. And I just, I have to say that one's my favorite. So would I recommend this series? Absolutely. Give it a chance and make sure that you don't give up. 
just because you don't like one out of the four books. I think that Damon's story is worth getting to. You gotta get to it. You gotta get to it. And I feel like you lose part of the story if you don't go in order. Let's wrap this up. So Corrupt was a three star for me. I didn't enjoy it that much because Michael as the alpha was throwing me off. And I do think that maybe I don't like alphas after reading all four books. I really liked Kai, Will, and Damon. And I didn't like Michael. I'm not sure if it was his jockiness of a personality. Maybe that's what it was. He was like just the captain, you know, the cocky one. I just, I didn't really like him. And then Rika, also I didn't really enjoy that much. And then all the other girls I really loved, but Winter was one of my favorites. And I guess I kind of liked Emery, but I really liked her in the beginning. And then once she started, I don't know, I didn't like her once the middle part came because I was like, just why do you have to be so mean? Will's being so nice to you. Like, Will is a sweetheart, and you're just, like, not accepting his love. <laughs> Hideaway was a solid four-star. I really love Kai and his relationship and how we got that going. I just thought it was a little bit focused on Damon and setting up the third book, which makes sense. But I still would have liked more Kai because we got a lot from the other characters. I feel like Kai's story has less of him than all of the others. And then... Obviously, Kill Switch was five stars. Kill Switch was amazing. Nightfall was also just so good. Like, I loved the storyline for Will. The fact that he, I can't go into spoilers, but his growth is just so good. And I really liked his story. Of, I just related to him. And usually I'm trying to relate to the girl naturally. But, oh my gosh, I really related to him because he's always been the one that looks for the happiness in things. And he tries to be optimistic for everyone. And sometimes that can really weigh you down as a person. And I just really liked how that was his storyline. Kind of how he grew up and wanted to help others. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was entertaining at least for people who haven't read this. And maybe you want to read it now. Or for people who have read this, I hope that you will comment your thoughts because I want to know. I feel like people will really have different opinions about this one because it's all about your preferences on your stories. And I feel like they all give a variety of things that the other books didn't. So I'd love to chat. Happy Devil's Night, y'all. I will see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye, guys.